Welcome everybody to game 24 of the regular season. Foxes are now three games above 500. They're 13 and 10. Going to be taking on the Rousers again. Beat them in the last game. Apollo Ortega is going to be pitching today's game. 2-2 two two with a 5.61 ERA and a 1.71 whip. Cameron Navarro is going to be the pitcher for the Rousers. 2-1 and one record with a 1.09 ERA and a 0.97 whip. It is going to be a tough game for the Foxes with Navarro on the mound with that solid ERA and sub one whip. Let's go take a look at the lineup for today's game, which got altered again. You have Alex Tyler batting first, Austin Bostain batting second, Magic Richardson batting third, Larry Smith batting fourth, Zach Chauvin's batting fifth, Brandon Soto batting sixth, Edward Jr. batting seventh, Josephus McGuffin batting eighth, and Eddie Robles will be batting ninth. And that'll do it. For this quick pre-game recap, let's get right into today's game. Welcome everybody to game three of this four-game series fighting Foxes and the Rousers. Foxes winning two out of the four so far, looking to possibly win the series today. And if they do win today's game, they can go for the sweep tomorrow. So let's see here as this first pitch is cranked foul. One and one count. Alex Tyler did not play yesterday. Took a little break to calm his nerves, and he's back as he hits this one to Norton for out number one. Austin Bostain also had the day off yesterday, but he's back in the lineup. Has that power against right-handed pitching, so they wanted to make sure they stacked their lineup with players who have that power against right-handed pitching, especially when Navarro is just that good. I believe it said he had a 1.08 ERA. So they need any little advantages they can get. Magic Richardson being completely locked in at the moment. Let's see if they could turn two here. He's too quick, so most likely not. And they do not. Larry Smith up. Smith has a 296 average with five home runs and 14 RBIs. Pickoff attempt. Safe at first. Cranks this one to center field. That's a good piece of hitting. We have runners on first and second now. If the Foxes can just keep getting little hits like this and cause Navarro to get his pitch count up, if they can bump him out of the game early, they have a chance of winning. If they can't bump him out of the game early and Navarro has a good pitch count, they might have a struggling, they might struggle to win this game, but we'll see with Zach Chauvin's up. Takes a strike outside. Breaks his bat on an inside pitch. Two, two, two outs, two on. And that is hit to the shortstop. Played that one perfectly. And that's going to be out number three. So we move to the bottom of the first. Apollo Ortega is going to be on the mound for the Foxes. First pitch from Ortega is a strike. Throws that same pitch again. Two curveballs. Tries to get him with a fastball. See if he slows it down with a change up here. Looks like he did as this is grounded to Smith. Looked like it bounced off the pitcher's mound right to the second baseman. Lisa Johnson up to bat. 264 average, two home runs, and 10 RBIs. One of the crucial factors in today's game is that Apollo Ortega needs to just make sure he doesn't get into hitter's counts. 2-0, 3-0, 3-1, counts like that. He does tend to walk batters when he gets in bad uh, counts. As this one's popped up to the catcher, and he catches it right near the fence. Quick inning. But anyway, like I was saying, Apollo Ortega, as long as he can maintain his pitch count and not get into hitter's counts, I believe he has a solid chance of doing fairly well today. As Soto swings at the first pitch for the out. Not what you want to do against someone who is very close to having a sub-1 ERA. Two pitches, two outs. My goodness. You can't give this man the opportunity to throw a complete game. You got to make him work for his pitches. Take a strike there. One and one to McGuffin. And that is 
Going to be out number three. Barely even said any words this inning as we're going to the bottom of the second. Four, five, and six hitters coming up. Foxes need to work on plate discipline and not swinging at the first pitch, but Ortega throws a strike in there. Tries to go with that same pitch, but a little too low. He's trying to paint the corners, but it's not working. There's that hitter's count I was talking about. He can't be getting into situations like that. Full count, Norton is known to whiff, but we'll see. And that's a strikeout. Great pitch by Ortega. Ortega's currently locked in, so let's hope he can remain locked in for the remainder of this game. 2-0. There's that hitter's count once again I was talking about. 2-1. See if he can bounce back here. Three and one. Full count, great pitch. It's going to be grounded to Larry Smith. Paulo Ortega getting out of that at bat, fighting back, and just getting the ground ball. Kurt Rasputin up to bat. 319 average with two home runs and eight RBIs on the season. Tries to get that curveball in there. Another ground ball. Ortega makes a diving play. A little unnecessary, but hey, it's for the team. As we go to the top of the third, nine, one, and two hitters are going to be up to bat. Eddie Robles replacing Ethan Johnson in today's game. Ethan Johnson was a little bit tired after playing consecutive games at catcher, so he's just taking a small break. This one's grounded. I believe that's four ground balls in a row for the Foxes. And not even hard hit ground balls, just little slow hit ones. And that's another ground ball. And that's going to be five ground balls in a row, if I'm not mistaken. Boston has a hit today. That's going to be another hit for Boston. Good piece of hitting. He was tense, hence why they took him out of the lineup before. But... Uh, that one game off, I guess, was all he needed as Magic Richardson's up to bat. Runner stealing. He's out easily at second. Don't know what he was going for there. But uh, now we're going to the bottom of the third. Foxes have been getting caught stealing a lot lately. The only person who should really be stealing is Magic Richardson since he's the fastest player on the team. But uh, other players decide they want to try to do it as well. I don't think the Foxes have a stolen base. Or the Foxes actually have gotten caught stealing more often the past couple of games than they actually got steals. So that's going to be a quick two outs. So far, both pitchers not throwing that many pitches. This could be out number three if it stays in play. Just at the fence. Wow, another small hit ground ball. Ortega gets it and throws it to Junior. We're gonna just be bl blowing by today's game. Three hits for the Foxes, no hits for the Rousers. Three, four, and five hitters up to bat. Richardson having another chance. One pitch, one out. They need to stop swinging at the first pitch here. I got to see how much pitches their starter has. Let's find out. He only has 27 pitches in the top of the fourth inning. Takes a strike. This one's hit. Should dink in. No, it does not. Sanders makes the catch. Ball had a little bit too much air time as Zach Chauvin's is up to bat. On another note. Navarro actually just now hit a sub-1 ERA. Very impressive as this is hits at the shortstop, and that's going to be another quick inning as this could be a pitcher's duel. I wonder who's going to end up coming out on top as Gusto Hangnail is up to bat. Takes a ball a little high. Ball's line. That's going to be the first hit of the game for the Rousers, breaking up the no-hitter. Alyssa Johnson. Ball outside. 
popped up. Should be an easy play for Richardson. Makes the catch. Saws it to the cutoff man, and that will be out number one. As Malachi Bradshaw is up to bat. 167 average with two home runs and four RBIs. Takes a strike on the inside corner of the plate. Ooh, look on the outside corner, but it looked like he did paint it. They called it a ball anyways. This is lined. That's going to be a base hit. Runners on first and second. One man out for Jonathan Norton. Extreme power hitter. You don't want to mess up a pitch here. Just like that one. Luckily, he swung a little late. Pushed that one foul. Ooh, try to get him with the low fastball. Two and one hitters count here. Pressure's on. Oh, good diving attempt, but does not get it. And the runner is going to try to head home. Has the speed. Larry Smith diving for it. Ball gets behind him, though, and that's going to be the first run scored. That's not going to be an error. And I know Ortega's not happy about that one. That one's going to be caught. Boston launching it a third. It looked like it was going to dink in for a hit. But uh, Boston playing good positioning there. Ball outside. Good strike right by the knees. Pulled foul. One and two. Let's see if he can get out of this inning. 2-2 two, two count, two out, two on, and there's the strikeout fastball on the outside corner. Rousers score one on, I guess you can't really call it an error, but uh, the second baseman dove for the ball and it just went right under his glove and he couldn't get to it in time. And that's how the runner scored. So, one nothing. 0-2 oh, count. My goodness, that slider is just filthy. Edward Jr. 0 for 1 on the day. He had a two home run game yesterday. Takes the ball. 2 0. Fastball 97 miles per hour on the corner. 3 1 count. If they can draw a walk here, that'd be terrific. Ooh, looked a little high. And Jr. swings that ball 4 there. That was a slider. Kind of jammed him there. So McGuffin's up to bat. Honestly, at this rate, Navarro's throwing only 40 pitches in the top of the fifth, and they swing at the first pitch again. At this rate, he might uh, pitch under 100, 100 pitches if the Foxes keep swinging at the first pitch here. Edison Hammond. Strike one. And that's going to be lined past the pitcher there. Honestly, for Ortega's performance today, not too bad. He's normally he normally gives up a couple of walks, and uh, he's their number four pitcher, so he's not the one that gives the best performance. But today he's actually not doing too bad. Three one count. Ooh, 3-2. Great pitch. Strike three. Fighting back. 3-0 and then fights back to get the strikeout as Don Serrano's up to bat. Strike one on the inside corner of the plate. Ooh, a little high, but they called it a strike anyway. And they might be able to turn two here. Gets the tag and tosses it at first, and that's going to be a double play. Good play by Larry Smith. As we move to the top of the sixth inning, 41 pitches for Navarro. As Eddie Robles is up to bat. They bring in Hoya Neat to pinch hit for some reason. Kind of early for pinch hitting, but all right. 2-0 count, good eye. 3-0 count. Draw the walk here. Okay, 3-1 count. Let's see if you can battle back. Good hit by Hoya Neat coming into pinch hit. That's going to be a single. Alex Tyler is 0 for 2 on the day. 
See if he can get a hit here. Pickoff attempt to first. Navarro's still locked in. Strike one. Just hit that one off the end of the bat, and that's going to be caught by Saunders for out number one. Boss staying up to bat. Two for two. Two singles. Let's see if he can make that three for three. 98 miles per hour in the bottom half of the plate. Three for three for Boston. Hits that one to right field. Runners on first and second. Foxes looking to score a run here. Magic Richardson 0 for 2. Looking to bring in some of that magic right now. Outside. Good take. Ooh, he's trying to smack that one out of the park. One and two to Richardson. 2-2 two -two count. Hits this one lined. Very close to getting doubled off there. Larry Smith, one for two. With a single. Has an RBI opportunity. One and no. That's a base hit. Are they going to bring the runner home? Yes, they are. It's going to be a close one. Not even. Actually, not even close. Good piece of hitting by Larry, but it was just hit so hard. That running home just shouldn't have been an option. And Ethan Johnson is going to be the new catcher. Was supposed to have the day off, but uh, here he is. Both pitchers are locked in. Tega losing a little bit of the accuracy as he walks the first batter. Melissa Johnson takes a strike, change up down the middle. Tries to drop that curveball, but a little bit inside. Two and one. These are those hitters' counts that are very dangerous. She just got under that one all the way at the warning track. Alex Tyler makes the catch. Malachi Bradshaw, one for two with a single. If the score ends up being 1-0, they're going to look back on the play that they sent the runner home. Honestly, it was a bad call, but you got to respect the aggressiveness of this Foxes team. Sometimes the aggressiveness can be good. Uh, sometimes it can be bad. As you can see, they tried stealing earlier in the game, and that was an out. They tried running home, and that was an out. So sometimes the aggressiveness works out, but uh, today the Foxes' aggressiveness has not. They're also swinging at the first pitch a lot today, hence why their starter uh, for the Rousers has barely given up. Oh, hmm, cutoff man takes the ball for some reason. Could have been a close play at third. I don't know why the cutoff man decided to snag it. But uh, anyway, runners on the corners, two outs. 1-1 one, one count. 1-2 one and two count. Let's see if he can get out of the inning here. And that's going to be a strikeout. Breaks is bad in frustration. As we move to the top of the seventh inning, solid pitcher's performance on both sides. Zach Chauvin's 0-2 on the day. The last inning, they were starting to hit Navarro, so let's see if they can continue that hitting as they hit this one to the third baseman for out number one. Brandon Soto for two on the day. He needs to utilize some of that power. He's starting to get tense again. That's a strike. The slider seems to be the Fox's weakness. Sliders that are just kind of in the corner. Paint the corner. They can't Hit those, 2-2 two -two count to Soto. There's that slider on the outside corner again. He hits it to the shortstop for out number two as Edward Jr. is up to bat. Ooh, trying to send that one to the second deck. And the second baseman Bradshaw gets it. And he's not fast enough to outrun it. That's going to be out number three. 
But Pablo Ortega only has 78 pitches. Both pitchers doing extremely well. Kurt Rasputin up to bat. One and zero. Oh. Two and zero. Oh. Good change up on the outside corner. Don't want to lose him here. Three and one. And that's going to be another leadoff walk for Ortega. Starting to lose a little bit of his energy, but uh, the coach has management has some faith in him to just try to get out of the inning. 2-0. and oh. Just got under that one. Would have been cranked all the way in the outfield. And probably a home run if he just didn't swing slightly under that ball. Ortega got really lucky. Kind of hung that. As Nayeli Sanders is up to bat. Swing and a miss. Throws on the outside corner, but it's a little out. Two and one. Two two count. Popped up to the left fielder. See if Tyler can make the catch. Yes, he does, and tosses it to the cutoff man for out number two. And now they decide to bring in Dino Wink. They take out Ortega. They don't let him finish the inning. Pretty questionable call there. Takes a strike. Two and one. Three and one. And he walks the first batter. It seems like every time I see Dino Wing come in, he always seems to walk the first batter that he faces. I don't know if that's just his thing. And then he just settles down after that as this one sits to right field. Should be an easy play for Boston as he makes the catch, gets out of the inning. Move to the top of the eighth. Foxes still haven't scored a run yet. He got six hits, but nothing to show for it as McGuffin is up to bat. Six more outs left for the Foxes. There's that slider again. 1-1. One, one. Ooh, the slider. Can't really do much with that one. 2-2. Two, two. He's probably going to go back to the slider. Oh, fastball inside. Nowhere near the zone. What are you swinging at, buddy? Ethan Johnson up to bat. He does have a couple clutch hits, so let's see if he can whip out some of that clutch again. 1-1. One, one. Check this swing. 2-1. and one. Ooh, solid contact, but hit it foul. There's that hard contact, but it's right to somebody for out number two. Alex Tyler up to bat. Navarro losing a bit of his energy and also some of that velocity and accuracy, as you can see there. If this is the time to score, it's now. 3-0, does he have the green light? Takes his base, that might be it for Navarro. If it is, solid performance today. Yes, it will be it for Navarro. Amazing performance, his ERA is now a 0 0.84, depending on what happens here. That's gonna be four hits for Boston, as they just can't get this man out. And once again, the Foxes have runners in scoring position. Let's see what happens here. Strike on the inside corner. Reese Franco is a two-pitch pitcher. Only has a fastball and a slider. But for the Foxes, sliders aren't their best pitches to hit. So, Ooh, questionable call there. Oh, Magic, what are you swinging at? That was way near your face. Big yikes. Definitely should not have been swinging at that one. There's protecting the plate, and then there's just swinging at nothing. This might be one of the best pitched games I've seen so far. I don't think I've seen such a low-scoring game this season. It's going to be popped up. Should have still been 0-0 if... Uh, the second baseman didn't bobble that diving play. Ball. 
That's going to be a strike. No, that's low. Just under the knees. 2-2 two -two count. Hits this one foul. Still a 2-2 two -two count. We'll do it again. That's lined. High and deep. At the wall. Off the wall. Very close play. Launches it to second. Ooh, just got in there. Very close play. In a situation like this, what do you do? Do you keep in Dino Wink? Do you bring in Miguel Almondo? I haven't seen Cole King pitch in ages, but uh, I don't think you really want to bring in Cole King in a situation like this. If he walks him, I'd suggest bringing in Almondo after that walk, but uh, let's see what they do. Oh, they keep him in. Hitters count dangerous. Very dangerous now. Got a lucky with that strike there. Full count. What do they do here? He walks. The base is loaded. For Kurt Rasputin. And they still keep him in the game. What are you doing, management? Extremely high pressure. Good slider. A strikeout is what they need. A slider on the outside corner. That too. That works. Touches. Oh my goodness. What just happened, folks? What just happened? Instead of stepping on home plate himself, he decided he wanted to throow it. 2 nothing. I don't even know if you call that an error. I don't know what that was. My goodness, what an easy out, and they screwed it up. There's the strikeout. That would have ended the inning. Still would have been one nothing. And now they decide to bring in Cole King. It just gets funnier and funnier. And now they decide they want to bring in Cole King with the bases loaded. But uh, it's that one right to Soto. As they get a run in the inning, I don't know how they didn't call that an error because uh, it definitely looked like one, but Larry Smith is two for three with two singles. Fox is trying to avoid getting shut out. 1-1 one, one count. They caught up in the ninth inning before, so let's see if they can do it again. 2-2. Two two. Just hanging in there. Ooh, very close. Oh. Gets the slider. Only a two-pitch pitcher, and they still can't figure him out. He's either throwing the slider or he's throwing the fastball. That's literally it. Popped up out of play. 2-2 two -two count. Oh, he bloops it. Can he outrun it? Yes, he can. He's safe at first. That's going to be an error. Brandon Soto has the opportunity to get a clutch hit here. And that is going to be a double play. Soto continues to be one of the least clutch players on the team. And the Rousers shut out the Foxes. They get eight hits, but they don't score any runs. Just left runners stranded on base all game long. Taking a look at the performance by Ortega. Six and two thirds takes the loss, but only gave up one earned run. That's it. Solid start. Very quality start. And then Dino Wink, it says he gave up one run. But uh, honestly, that should have been an error on the play. But, uh, you know, whatever. Ortega not very happy about taking the loss. Especially after pitching a pretty solid gem like that. Even the bullpen did pretty good. But uh, Navarro came out on top. His ERA is now a 0 0.84. Just absolutely destroying any team he faces. He's 3-1 and one on the season now. Player of the game is probably going to be Navarro. Yep, it is. Seven and two-thirds. Six hits. A walk and two strikeouts. Apollo Ortega. Uh, second player of the game because he had an amazing performance. 
And Jonathan Norton, two for three with an RBI. And that'll do it, folks. The Fighting Foxes get shut out in disappointing fashion and lose this one two to nothing. Have a good night.